So, third and final part of the series, and what better way to kick things off than with the job that was most likely to make me poo myself. But doing this was absolutely terrifying. So this is the 45 degree angle on the end of the desk that will allow me to make the grain flow continuously across and down over the edge. I cut that using the TS55 and a guide rail. Um, and that was, it was a relatively slow process, almost set fire to the wood there because I had the blade speed set too high. But overall, it went rather well. So with those both cut, I could mark out the locations for the dominoes on the top board. And that was spread roughly two inches apart on each one. And I could angle the bed on the domino to allow me to go perpendicular into the face of that joint. And then once it was cut on one of the faces, I could line up the grain perfectly on the inside edge and trace those um, lines straight down so I could get the dominoes matched up perfectly, therefore matching up the grain perfectly. With those in place, I could assemble it and practically bitch slap it in place. It's the best, best assembling method out there, I can assure you. It, it doesn't hurt at all. And then clamp that in place using some parallel jaw clamps and some cascomite. And once that was all dry, I could clean it up with a Lee Nielsen number four. That was just to get rid of any excess glue and also get the joint meeting up perfectly on the corner of the mitre. Once that was established, I could finish off with the Merca and some Abronet. I took the whole table back to 240 grit. This is the underside I'm working on here and just started sanding or finished sanding with the grain. And after delving into the war zones that are the woodworking forums, where people argue over finishing methods and sharpening methods and what wood is this the most popular finish for walnut seemed to be tongue oil so i thought i would go for that give it a try first time i've used it and must say i'm rather impressed with it it just feels slightly different than my default option of boiled linseed maybe slightly thicker and builds up a thicker film but not plasticky just yeah, it's just nice it works very well for walnut and then after the first coat just cut that back with some four aught steel wool apply the second coat which makes it a little bit more of a glossier satin finish so up until that point i was only working on the underside just because i wanted to get protective coats on there and with those i think i had two coats at that point i could start work on the top So after three coats of oil were applied, I could head back home, get everything disassembled and get rid of this ghastly excuse for a desk. I was not sorry to see that go. Then I could start measuring the height for the baton that would hold the end of the desk against the wall. So here I'm just getting it level. Draw a line across the top of the baton. Get the center point of the baton. Drill into it, almost drill into my leg, and then use those to mark out the holes for the wall plugs. Drill a slightly bigger hole for the wall plugs. And then what the fixing I'm using here, basically you put them in and then you pull them out with this device here and it basically makes it flare out on the opposite side of the plasterboard. So it gives you a much better bearing surface on the opposite side and stops the uh, wall plug from being able to fall out. If it does fall out, it's taking a huge chunk of the wall with it. So it's a somewhat scary um, thought, but I think the fixing should be strong enough. So I can get the desk into place, see how it registers against the wall, the wall that isn't square. Weigh it down with a TS55 and I think that was a bass guitar case. And then I wanted to fix a baton on the back just to make sure that it is properly secure. So here I'm just going to get the middle one fixed for now. And with that being able to pivot, I could get that to match the level of the desk just in case it was out of flat or twisted or anything like that. And then with those holes I marked out, get the plugs fitted for those and then those battens are perfectly level with all that battens perfectly level with the one on the opposite wall now to fix the angle on the end of the desk obviously my wall isn't square so i had to cut the desk to match that 
So unfortunately, I lost the footage of me cutting the desk to this angle, but basically I did this in the garden at about, about half nine at night, so I'm sure the neighbours were most pleased with that. And once that was all matching the wall, I could drill up into the desk. This would pilot the hole for the screw that's going to hold it all down. I use torque screws for this just because they're less likely to come out. And then with that all fixed in place, pretty solid, get it all assembled again and see what it looks like. absolutely beautifully so much nicer to work on than that other piece of crap that I had um, yeah absolutely love it if you want to see more of my work you can visit the card which will appear in the top right corner somewhere around here that will take you directly to my website where you can view my portfolio you can see work like this or this chair that I'm sitting on I decided to upgrade the office chair that I was previously on and uh, yeah also social media accounts Facebook Instagram Twitter Pinterest LinkedIn if you're a business person maybe. And yeah, a follow on those or a like or comment, whatever you can do to boost my name would be, I'd be eternally grateful for it. Yeah, thank you very much for watching the series and I look forward to the next project. Cheers.